Namaskar. Care provided in the first hour of birth has a major impact on the survival, future health and well-being of a newly born baby. We, the healthcare workers, have a major role in providing this care. The four basic needs of all babies at the time of birth are normal breathing, warmth, mother's milk and protection from infection. Key components of immediate routine care at birth for a normal newborn include provision of skin to skin care and warmth, delaying the cord clamping and early initiation of breastfeeding. To ensure optimal care at birth, it is important to have resuscitation preparedness in terms of both the availability of skilled personnel as well as functional resuscitation equipment. Regarding the personnel and equipment at delivery, the newborn resuscitation corner should be located in a secure corner of the delivery room itself. All deliveries must be attended by at least one healthcare personnel, doctor or nurse, who is skilled in the newborn resuscitation. In case of high-risk pregnancy, where more extensive resuscitation is anticipated, a second trained person must also be readily available. Accordingly, there should be separate teams for each of the babies during delivery of multiple births. It is important to ensure availability of functional equipment according to the equipment checklist as provided in the Neonatal Resuscitation Guidelines of the American Academy of Pediatrics and American Heart Association Guidelines for Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation and Emergency Cardiovascular Care of the Neonates. It is important to maintain asepsis and warmth throughout the resuscitation to prevent further complications. The optimal temperature in the delivery room should be preferably between 25 to 28 degrees centigrade. Inside the mother's womb, the babies are protected from outside environment. When they are born, they must be protected from infections. The personnel attending the delivery must follow the universal precautions like wash hands, wear gloves, mask and gown while attending a delivery. It is important to prevent infections at birth by observing the five cleans. That is clean hands, which means following appropriate hand hygiene and wearing sterile gloves. Number two, clean surface, which means use clean and sterile surface or towel to receive the baby. Number three, a clean blade, which means cut the umbilical cord with a sterile blade or a scissor. Number four, clean cord tie, which means clamp the cord with a sterile cord clamp or a tie. Number five, clean towels to dry and then wrap the baby. Cleanliness at delivery reduces the risk of infection for the mother and baby, especially neonatal sepsis and tetanus. It is important to call aloud the time of birth. This helps in accurate recording of the time and helps in alerting the other personnel in case any help is needed. The time of birth is recorded when last fetal part emerges from the mother's body. Record the APGAR score at 1 and 5 minutes after birth. For all babies who do not require resuscitation, umbilical cord clamping must be delayed for at least 60 seconds to allow transfer of additional amount of blood from placenta to the baby. This practice of delayed cord clamping has various health benefits for the babies. Like, 
improved hemoglobin concentration and improved iron stores at three to six months. Receive the baby in a clean warm towel. Deliver the baby on mother's abdomen and initiate skin to skin care. Gently dry the baby with a sterile towel while waiting for the cord to be clamped after one minute. Do not remove the vernix while drying the baby as it protects the skin and helps in maintaining temperature of the baby. Remove the wet linen and cover the baby and mother with another dry towel or blanket. Clamp the cord after one minute, about 2.5 centimeters away from the skin, also leaving about 2 centimeters beyond the clamp. Do a quick examination for any obvious malformations. Put an identity band for the baby. Continue skin to skin contact till end of the first breastfeeding, which may take an hour. If mother has to be shifted to postnatal ward, shift the mother and baby diet in the skin to skin position. Skin to skin position promotes breastfeeding, prevents hypothermia, and improves the mother-infant interaction. Baby-mother should not be left alone, unsupervised. Monitor the baby's breathing, color, and temperature every 15 minutes for the first one hour. A baby's temperature tends to fall immediately after birth. If allowed to progress, hypothermia in a neonate can result in fatal outcomes. If the baby is not breathing well, then baby should be taken away anytime for needful resuscitation. Before leaving the delivery room, baby weight should be taken and birth details documented. Vitamin K1 mg intramuscular using 26 gauge needle and 1 ml syringe should have been given on the anterolateral part of the baby's thigh. Birth vaccines such as hepatitis B and BCG must have been given. The baby should have been examined thoroughly and findings recorded in the neonatal record sheet. The healthcare worker must show the baby and communicate to the family regarding baby's gender, weight and well-being. Axillary temperature of the baby must be documented. So the care after birth includes warm chain, continued breastfeeding, care of the cord and care of eyes. Firstly, ensuring warmth to prevent the hypothermia the following must be taken care. For prevention of hypothermia and associated complications, the concept of warm chain should be followed and maintained. For this, the delivery room should be between 25 to 28 degrees centigrade. The room should not have any drought of air. The baby should be dried immediately after birth and wet linen should be replaced by a warm cloth while providing uninterrupted skin-to-skin -skin care leading to early initiation of breastfeeding. Temperature should be monitored in the first hour every 15 minutes. This should be followed by rooming in which also helps in keeping the baby warm. Bathing should be postponed at least for next 24 hours. The baby should be clothed well, well wrapped and head covered with one to two extra layers of clothes as may be required so as to keep the baby's hand and feet warm and pink. Stable low birth weight babies should be provided kangaroo care for as long as possible through the day. Mother should be taught how to avoid hypothermia, how to recognize it and how to rewarm a cold baby. Initiating and continuing breastfeeding after birth is the key to successful sustained breastfeeding. This requires 
counseling and support beginning from the antenatal period. Even after birth, the mother requires support and counseling for breastfeeding to be established. Family should also be primed and counseled regarding the breastfeeding and providing support to the mother. Mother and family need to be educated about various health benefits of exclusive breastfeeding both for the mother and the baby. For the cot care, do not apply anything and keep the umbilical stump dry. Keep the stump away from the genitals. Make sure that the nappy is folded well below to avoid any contamination. Clean both the eyes at birth using sterile swabs. Use separate swabs for both the eyes and swipe gently from inner to outer canthus. Routine antibiotic prophylaxis for prevention of ophthalmia neonatorum for all neonates is not recommended. Routine cleaning of eyes on daily basis is also not recommended. Eye care truly is contextual and depends on the unit policy. Now let's talk about prevention of infection, that is the clean chain after delivery. Following a clean chain after delivery also ensures prevention of infection. Baby must be roomed in with the mother all through the day and night and exclusively breastfed. Caregivers must wash hands before handling the baby as well as after changing the diaper. The cord should be kept clean and dry. A clean soft cotton cloth or a diaper may be used for or as a nappy. Crowding in baby mother's room should be avoided. Any visitor with fever, cough, respiratory symptoms should not be allowed to handle the baby. Family should also be educated about harmful traditional practices like giving prelactial feeds, application of kajal in the eyes, putting oil in the ear, applying the cow dung on the cord or applying talcum powder. Regarding the discharge preparedness and readiness, the mother and baby diet should stay in the hospital for at least 48 to 72 hours. Before discharge, please ensure the breastfeeding is established and mother is confident. Baby must have passed the stool within first 24 hours and baby should be passing urine at least six times a day. The jaundice has been monitored. Bilirubin should be in a range that does not require intervention. Thorough examination including the anthropometry of the baby has been done and documented. Baby is well and free from any illness that requires close observation. Besides, screening for developmental dysplasia of hip, hearing, red reflex, critical cyanotic heart disease and thyroid functions, if possible, is desirable. Discharge advice should preferably be written as well as explained to the primary caregiver in their local language. A follow-up date for review of jaundice and feeding must be given. The mother should be advised regarding continued exclusive breastfeeding till six months and daily vitamin D supplementation with 400 international units. Follow-up for immunization schedule should be explained. Danger signs should be listed and mother be educated to recognize them and then seek timely care at the nearest health facility without any delay. Namaskar. Thank you.